The following interview was conducted with Judith M. Gappa, Professor Emeritus of Educational Studies at Purdue University for the or Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on um, August the 26th, 2009 in Stewart Center on the West Lafayette campus. Good afternoon, Dr. Gappa, and welcome to the Oral History Program. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's start off by if you'll tell us where and when you were born and your parents and your siblings in early years. Okay, I was born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1939 because my father was in the military, so I was born at Fort Knox. Um, and I, I have uh, one older sister. Um, my early years were spent moving all over the United States and living abroad because I was part of this military family. So I went to about five grammar schools and three junior high schools and three senior high schools during that period of time. Oh my goodness. Was there one where you spent, that you want to make a comment, that you spent more time and were, or the one perhaps that you graduated from? Well. <laughs> <laughs> That's not easy to do. Okay. So I spent uh, three years at Fort Phil, Oklahoma. Okay. I was in grammar school. All right. And then I ended up being back there for my senior year of high school. And I hated it because, oh. because uh, I was back there only for that one year. One year, right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I haven't much, got much sure. to say. Well, just uh, a lot of traveling. Years, I spent two years in Italy in the fifth and sixth grades. Uh -huh. and, uh, uh -huh. Now I don't have too much to say. Right. About okay. Uh, sure. Let's uh, let's talk then about college. Where did you attend college and get your degree? Okay. Well. <laughs> College was equally chaotic. Um, I I went to Wellesley College in Massachusetts, on a, uh, and uh, stayed there uh, half till up more than halfway through my junior year. Then I got ill, and uh, I was in the hospital for a couple of months. And then I went home to be with my parents, and uh, I met my current husband. So I married him a year later. And he was also he is he is now retired, but he was also in the military. Okay. And so we moved all over. But he said, "Look, I I'll put you right straight through the rest of your college because um, that's the best insurance policy either one of us can have." Um, my parents said if I married him, they wouldn't they wouldn't support me any further. Okay. So Joe put me through college, but being being as how we were in the military, it was chaotic. I. We were at Fort Rucker, Alabama, and I went to uh, one of the state university branches in Alabama, and then I went to St. Mary's College in, in Kansas for a year, and then we went to Iran, and I studied at the conservatory there for a couple of, for a while, and then we came back, and I finally finished up at George Washington <laughs> University while he was in Vietnam. So I went to five different colleges as well. Wow. You can set up your own uh, travel college uh, itinerary, I think. Right, right. <laughs> Chaotic. Yes. And my uh, master's and doctorate, one right after the other. Okay. And I noticed that your um, your master's was in musicology, and then you went to educational administration, higher ed for the doctorate. Right. Uh huh. Okay. And then you also at one time got the certificate from the Institute of Cur of Educational Management at Harvard. Right. Right. Good. I did uh, uh, Utah State University where I was employed when I got my doctorate. Uh -huh. um, all, uh, sent me to the Harvard uh, Institute for Educational Management. Good. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about your career path before you came um, to Purdue as the first Vice President for Human Relations. Perhaps your most recent position before that or however you want to uh, make any comments on that before you came to Purdue. Well, I... Um, I started my career at, um, uh, at uh, Utah State University because my husband was there. Okay. Was he now out of the service? No, oh. no. He, he was still in the service, but it ended up being his last tour. He went there as a professor of military science. Oh, good. Okay. OTC. Uh-huh. And um, so we both went. I, I was very unhappy about this, but we both went. And um, actually, it worked out quite well because I, I did my doctorate at Utah State. I was It was interesting because at that time, uh, the major educational associations were closed to women, um, and I was the only woman in our entire doctoral program. Wow. 
down by another program because I was a woman. So huh. it was for the passage of Title IX. But mm. then when I finished, of course, I was in Utah. Sure. And um, uh, I was very fortunate in that the university offered me a position there. Good. Um, and that was as director of Affirmative Action Equal Opportunity Program. This was back, way back, before uh, Title IX and uh, at the time when the Mormon religion um, decided that blacks couldn't belong until they were sued, and then they decided blacks could belong <laughs> to the Mormon church. Wow. And it was a wild time to be in Utah because the, the enforcement people in Denver loved to come over there. They happened to be African Americans themselves, and they just loved to do site visits to the Utah institutions to get mm. their revenge for their own educational problems. And, um, and you had tried to, tried a lot to handle then. Huh? You had a lot to handle there. Oh yeah, but uh, <laughs> we had a we had a good time. We good. had a good time, and uh, I um, I it was there that I learned a lot about. Um, all of the legal um, requirements, the regulatory requirements, but also the reasons for and the, and the dissent against all of that legislation which sure. was coming through at that time. Okay, well, good. Um, good foundation for your future career. Right, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I, uh, I, I reported to the uh, provost and the president, and uh, so I had a sweeping view of the entire university which I've always had in my career, so uh -huh. I like it. I like right. the So I never was in a department where I taught. Okay. Um, so you were primarily in administration? Right. All right. Uh, actually, um, I had an <laughs> academic appointment. I know this sounds wild, but I had an academic appointment in the School of Home Economics. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because that was the only place that would give me a point. And <laughs> that's I, okay. <laughs> and, I, and I said I wanted an academic appointment. Sure. I couldn't have been more of a misfit for the family life and home economics college, but anyhow, that's where it had my rank. That's okay. Uh, which I used. Um, uh, it was there that they sent me to Harvard. I left uh, Utah State University. I had a hard time. Uh, particularly in that job uh, and uh, immersed in that Mormon culture. Mm -hmm. I kept telling Joe that we had to leave. And so finally, I went over to NCHEM, the National Center for Higher Education Management Systems in Boulder, okay. for a year and a half, and then came back. Mm -hmm. And then uh, about then, he retired from the military, and he, he um, started to work as, a, as the Associate Vice President for Research at Utah State. He completed his doctorate and there at uh, the University of Utah. And um, I, uh, I got on the job market because I just said, I can't live in this state. Uh, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful place and it's a lot better now. But then it was just so heavily Mormon and, and it's dominating that uh, it was just a very difficult place for me to be. Mm -hmm. So I got on the job market again, and I was offered the position of um, Associate Provost Dean of Faculty at San Francisco State University. Uh, I think that it, my affirmative action background appealed to them, and um, so I went there. Okay. And uh, academic rank accompanied that position, so I um, I came in as a full professor. I know. Good. In all the debates about how you get tenure, I just got it, you know. Sure. Didn't have to show anybody anything, though I must say I was pretty productive during that whole period of time. Um, so I, I uh, enjoyed San Francisco State enormously. I was responsible for all of the personnel actions that affected faculty. Uh, for the liaison with the collective bargaining unit, it came in. Uh, bargaining came in at that time for a liaison with the Senate, and uh, it was a really great experience. Very, very interesting. Right. But after ten years of doing that, um, that was enough. So that's when I got on the job market again, and uh, the position at Purdue came up. Okay. Let me ask you this: at San Francisco State is it primarily a commuter college, or is there a residence there as well? 
There are residents there. Well, okay. it's in the California State University system. Okay. Which is, uh, you know, California has the master plan or, or did have it before its budget problem. Sure. The University of California is the premier research university. So and then California, the other is the California State California University. California State sure. University system as right. the um, uh, undergraduate and master's level uh, curriculum, and then the community college system has okay. the to your degree and okay good okay fine well now we're at Purdue and you are appointed the vice president for human relations the first one so let's talk a little bit about that how uh, your initial settling in and then I have some specific things as I mentioned to talk about diversity and some of the other responsibilities that you had okay well um, I uh, I interviewed for the position at uh, Purdue and uh, um, I had uh, really nice experiences at Purdue. At that time, Tip Tyler was the uh, provost. Okay. And he and I got along famously. We just really enjoyed each other. I, I, don't, I don't know whether anybody there remembers Tip, but uh, you, uh, most people would. He. You know he's passed away, don't you? Huh? He's passed away. Yeah. yeah oh, he's okay. passed away, but he was a famous entomologist. Right. And um, I think it was entomologist. Well, it was uh, he did some things with the uh, um, help the particularly natural uh, products per se in, in pharmacy was one of the right. things I think um, he did. He was in pharmacy, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. And um, uh, we just got along real well. And then um, after I accepted the position, he resigned. Okay. Uh, he he was a lot of the uh, reason for my going there because I knew that he and I could work well together, um, and I knew that that was going to be the focus of a, a, a major focus of the position. Uh, and Bob Bringle came in as the uh, provost, um, and that relationship was more difficult. Okay. Um, uh, but but anyhow, you reported directly. Am I un, um, correct to President Baring? Yes, I did. Okay, okay. Yes, I did. But, uh, yeah, I, I was hired by him and I reported to him. But um, uh, he, he, he pretty much wanted me to do the initiating. I mean, because none of them knew what to initiate. Sure. Quite frankly. So I, you know, I was pretty much uh, left to figure out what the position should become. Uh, it had stipulated in it that there would be a women's resource office and there would be a uh, minority Affairs or a Diversity Resource Office, that's what it eventually was titled, mm -hmm. and that I would do a few things, but most of it was just loose to be defined as yeah. a brand new position. Okay. And uh, uh, that took a lot of time and effort and thought. Um, all, right. uh, all the usual struggles over space and budget and, you know, everything that goes on with that development process. So that was certainly uh, the early part of my time there to, to uh, get the campus talking about what diversity means, uh, what impact is it going to have on the campus, what are our responsibilities with regard to it, what can it do for me, all of that sort of thing, and to come through with equal opportunity policies and sexual harassment policies and all kinds of things that needed to be done, okay. and to get the space for the offices and open those offices. Um, as you know, space is always major. Always a problem, Mary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, I, and it was delightful that that railroad square building was, or railroad, the railroad building was given to the, to the diversity program, and, and we were able to house everybody there, and they renovated it beautifully for us. It was, that was a treat, but that took Oh, a couple of years of my time. Oh, because, right. Yeah, well, I, I did read somewhere where that initial thing, and this is always true, is to learn the Purdue, you know, learn Purdue when you step in like that, right. and which is what you just shared with us on. Right. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about that. You had a diversity team, I believe, that you were involved in that, and, and your work with the diversity. You want to make any com some comments on that? Well, I had a, um, I had a, uh, a human relations advisory committee. That yes, was I good. Okay. Campus wide, and I had a and a, and then we got started. Uh, we started on a uh, with a university task force on women's issues. Then we created the diversity team, um, 
and uh, the task force on sexual harassment that took quite a bit of time to get the harassment policy passed but uh, it's been used by other institutions sure. and it's highly regarded okay well, all of those things were new initiatives but i started out just trying to have a conversation with the campus community about what diversity means and doesn't mean um, one of the things that i was unable to get done but i uh, was to get the uh, to add the um, uh, sexual preference to the equal opportunity statement. Okay. I was pleased that when President Jiske came in, he, he had it done in two weeks. So right. it, that was a hot issue at the end of my time as vice president. Okay. okay. I don't know what exactly you want to know about this, that. So well, that's just, I mean, not that, but about being a vice president, so I'll just leave it up to you. All right. I think that's good. But also, uh, one of the things about faculty diversity, that was... Um, um, something that you sort of were involved in, were you not? Along with right. the diversity, uh, okay. Um, uh, I was, and mm -hmm. I was involved in the in the recruiting. I might say that it never entered my mind as a candidate for the position, coming from a place like San Francisco State University, to think about who was going to be on the president's management team. Now, I met people as I was interviewing, and so forth and so on. Everything seemed fine. But then when I showed up, I realized that the 13 uh, president, uh, uh, vice presidents and so forth, that the 13 people, the press people and the whatever, that came to his regular staff meetings, they were all white males with their degrees from Purdue. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> and that, and, and there I was, and, and he'd have these meetings uh, I can't remember which morning, but every week, and we'd all gather in a conference room, and, you know, there they'd all be, and here I was, and obviously I was different, and, you know, it, it, was, it was hard on everybody, because they were used to telling dirty jokes and doing all kinds of things that men do when they get sure. together, I guess, and, okay. you know, I kind of walloped all of that agenda, and, but it, it was just remarkable, the kinds of things they said and, and, and talked about and so forth. Um, I was awfully glad when, when that broke up a little bit. Sure. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. A little growing Maybe things there. Yeah. Throughout the time right. I was, uh, Let me the ask you. For the next uh, group that integrated somewhere. Right. Um, Dr. Gabba, that Human um, Relations Advisory Committee, what was its responsibility? It reported to you, and what were some of the things that they did? Can you make a comment on that? It was a university wide. Um, uh, from uh, all the schools, et cetera? Uh, well, yeah, all okay. the schools and major uh, administrative units uh, had a representative, and they helped me a lot to well, define good. the Well, good. That's what advisory out. committees are supposed to do. Right. <laughs> I okay. had one for my oral history. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Well, they helped me a lot. Well, that and your oral history is a brand new thing. So, you that's know, right. they helped a lot, set the directions, and um, uh, persuade the campus community or get it motivated to participate in various things and um, uh, just to provide good guidance. Right. And they know they're coming from their respective departments and they can work there and then through up to you, et cetera, with, right. with words, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. That's very good. Okay. A really good working group, too. They, they, uh, they got along well. And, okay. Uh, we got a lot done that way. Good. We, we had a, a long period of time in which we discussed what diversity met in campus-wide and invited a lot of participation and then got a definition for the offices and so forth. It was very, very helpful in setting the groundwork. Right. Okay. And then you also that, uh, you did issue, didn't you work on that, you worked on that report for the status of women at Purdue? There was a task force on women's issues. Right. Okay. That, that came a little bit later. Right. Okay. Uh, that, that task force and also then they did the, um, diversity team and the uh, uh, task force report on diversity issues. Okay. So you, there were several of those. Right. The Women's Resource Office, that there was somebody in place when you came. Am I correct? Was it Dorothy Leland? And then you had to, you replaced, there was a replacement for somebody to head up the Women's Resource Office? Hello? 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 Okay. Uh, I asked. I think we we're we we're talking a little bit about the. I asked about the Women's Resource Office. Um, you have Dorothy Leland, I believe. Had she been the head when 
you came and then you need to replace her? That office was in place when you came, am I correct or incorrect no, on that? No, none of it was in place. Oh, okay. There All was right. nothing in place. Okay. Um, I, I hired Dorothy. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, she was there for a couple of years, and then I can't remember the name of the person who came over from Ohio. Okay. But she was really good, and, and um, she was there uh, all the way through the rest of my tenure. Sure. Okay, that's fine. Um, any other, uh, I'm sorry, leave it open, anything other than that you may want to make a comment on the position and before we move into, because then you went to the College of Education. Right. Okay. But um, uh, uh, probably my major contributions to Purdue were through the uh, Vice President for uh, human. for human Relations right. position. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, that it it, it was it was a very difficult position to define, and I think it, it's been very interesting to see the news recently about that they've split that job now mm -hmm. uh, into two vice presidencies, as I understand it. Right, that's what and, I understand. And um, uh, that makes sense, because on the one hand, you have all of that compliance activity uh, that goes on, and uh, uh, certainly we had some very interesting cases of discrimination and harassment and things like that, that takes a lot of time. Uh, and then you have all of the issues with recruiting students. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether they still have the same system, but when I was there, they had, um, uh, the, I, and I don't know what the composition of the student body is right now, but it, when I came in, uh, there was a major effort in, in many of the colleges, I'd say most, to recruit and retain more um, minority group members as students. Sure. And um, each college had its own person who was responsible for doing that. The problem with it was that they never talked to each other particularly, or, or they talked to one or two of them talked with each other, and they, um, uh, they had greatly varying resources for what they were doing. I was trying to bring them together um, in a group. I wasn't trying to take control of their offices or anything along that line, but I was trying to um, get them to come together and talk about, you know, the various things they were doing and share information with each other and count on each other. As I left the position, that, that discussion was going on. I don't know whatever happened, but sure. we put that together sort of as the diversity team area. Okay, okay. Um, and then alongside with that, of course, you have the Affirmative Action Program, which is a compliance-based. That's right, group. exactly. You have both. So I thought it was interesting that they split it up. Right, exactly. Yeah, we have some new people on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is it okay? Should we talk a little bit about the uh, your role in the um, teaching at the College of Education? Sure. Okay. Go, um, now, then you went to tell us a little bit about what the course is. And I know that you... I did interview do, uh, Dr. Herring, and she told me that you were co-teaching a particular course just before she retired. Or yeah, had you done? I, I guess I guess so. Okay. Uh, she and I were fast friends because she came in a year after I did uh -huh. as dean of the college, and for a long time we were the only two women. Uh huh. <laughs> I I don't know how long you've been there or what your experience has been, but well, we kind of counted on each other. Sure. You need and, a little support. Um, support, I think, is nice. Yeah. What? A little support you need is nice. To bounce yeah. things off yeah. each other. So uh, she and I had a, a strong friendship personally as well as professionally. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, I was delighted to go to her college. Sure. She was always very, very supportive of what we were trying to right. do with the higher ed program. But um, uh, we never did get the resources to build it. Right. Um, what what uh, tell for researchers? What specific uh, courses were you teaching when you were over there? When I was over there, uh -huh. uh, I taught um, the organization and administration of higher education. I taught a course on equity issues in education, uh -huh. which uh, was popular throughout the college after it got going. Um, I taught uh, the higher education law and uh, human resources management and future issues in higher education. I taught just about everything in the program. Wow. Quite a bit. Deborah Taub was there at the time. She did all the student personnel sure. classes. Okay, so. okay. Now, they I did have that degree. It was over in the counseling section of that department. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, as I said earlier, you reported to Dr. Baring, so he interacted with Dr. Baring. Right. Uh, any, any comment? Uh, you worked pretty closely together? Or? 
and some things I'm sure since you reported to him. Right. Uh huh. Um, he he um, uh, he he was a, it was a very fine man and, and an interesting man. Um, I don't think this was his favorite area of administration particularly. Um, as a you know he he was less aware of the issues until I got there anyhow and and you know used to the way things had been um, we we got along fine he was very very busy I had regular meetings with him and I could get to him if I needed to sure. but I tried to confine the agenda to what you know was regularly scheduled and pretty much he supported everything I wanted I thought he was generous with the budget and um, the, the only thing that that, that I, I didn't get that I would have liked was more flexibility in the salaries for the two um, uh, people, the Director of Diversity Affairs and the Director of Women's Resources. Okay. I, I was uh, it come somewhat held back in my hiring but because of the salaries. But other than that, I had, you know, all of the resources I needed. Good. Well, that's nice to hear. Were you involved at uh, President's Council? Were you in, on the President's Council when you were here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. the group I was talking about that were... Right. Well, the President's Council, is, as a formal group, is right. larger because it includes the dean. That, but the smaller group that reported directly to the President without the academic unit, okay. that was that group I was... Mentioned in. earlier. Okay. And, of course, Vision 21 was during the bearing years, the uh, advancement and development uh, right. things that uh, was right. on there. You certainly have been very active in publications, even during and afterwards. And uh, have you got anything in the pipe at the moment? You working well, on any publication? Our recent book is out, the, okay. the uh, book I did with um, uh, Ann Austin at Michigan State and Andrea Trice at Purdue. Uh, she was at Purdue at the time. She resigned her position at Purdue uh, some years ago because <laughs> they weren't flex enough, flexible enough during the tenure probationary period. Okay. That was a major issue. I don't know what's happening now, but the, they, they were losing young women faculty because they wanted to have children. At yeah. The, Anyhow, the, 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 the policy, I believe it's more expandable now. It's changed somewhat. I hope so. Uh -huh. um, uh, anyhow, our book, Rethinking Faculty Work, mm -hmm. Higher Education Strategic Imperative, um, 2007. Okay, okay. So there's been a lot going on from that. Good, okay. Uh, awards and honors. Any comment on any specific awards or honors that uh, you'd like to comment on? Uh, not particularly. I okay. don't keep track of them. Okay, all righty. And are you still active in a couple of associations like the American Association for Higher Education? Well, uh, that unfortunately cl uh, went out of business. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was the big umbrella organization for administrators. I've become more active in the AACU. Oh, okay. Um, lately. Okay. And uh, the Academy for Academic Personnel Administrators has to do, had to do with uh, collective bargaining which I was involved in at San Francisco State. Right, okay. Um, now the retirement activities. What sort of things uh, have you been doing in your retirement? Well, um, we li we're living in Santa Rosa, California. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I'm busy learning Spanish. Okay. Uh, I have class tonight. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, my husband and I have gotten quite involved in um, a variety of things, the most interesting of which right now is that we uh, started a, a scholarship program at Sonoma State University, which is right here in the community. Okay. Uh, and we're calling it the Yes We Can Fund. And last year we gave uh, uh, two uh, four-year full-ride scholarships for um, low-income, uh, preferably Hispanic students from the local area. Wonderful. And so we've been, we've been, and then we have two more students down at our local junior college getting associate degrees, more career focused. So we're quite busy trying to build a donor base for the Yes We Can. Oh, that's so that wonderful. We can, can accommodate all the students. But it's interesting because the students who are eligible for the program come out of the pre college programs at Sonoma State. Upward Bound and so forth that Purdue has too. Sure. Okay. And uh, they're ready. They're well prepared for college. And there's uh, research evidence that shows these students are better off if they stay close to their home. Okay. So okay. that's what we've got going on. We're trying to build that scholarship fund and. 
check up on all the students we've got in college at the moment. I was going to ask you that. You're going to interact with the winners of the scholarship oh, yeah. winners? That's yes. wonderful. We that... chose them. We chose them, and they were over uh, to see us uh, last week sometime, and they're starting school today, and we're going to follow them. Oh, that's all wonderful. All the way through. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That, that's really great. You know, but so What size is the student body there? At that? Is, is, is it primarily do they live on campus or do they live within the community? I think they do both. I think do they? they live on campus. It's one of the smaller campuses. I'd say a couple thousand students. Okay. Well, that's sort of nice. They get a lot more individualized attention, yeah. and, and uh, they get the best of both worlds. Right. That sounds right. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember when you were here, do you have a Purdue tradition that sort of you still recall, such as maybe commencement or the Boilermaker special, both of which are going on? Um uh, Boilermaker special. Right. Uh, a no, the little. I, I didn't like was that I had to go to all the football games. <laughs> <laughs> well, I well. Uh, I enjoyed doing it. The sure. trustees sat in back of me, and we had a good time. But I'm not a football fan. <laughs> well, it's it's the camaraderie because yeah. I go too, and it's the tailgating in my front yard. It's all part of the uh, atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how about an outstanding event in your life? Would you like to share with us? An outstanding event in uh -huh. my life? Right. Oh, well, certainly one was my, my marriage because sure. that's oh, yes. going on for some time and we've really built each other's careers. It's been interesting. The other, another one is when we uh, spent two years in Iran. Um, uh, it, while the Shah, it, was, it was while the Shah was still in power. And we adopted our son there. Okay. And we had quite an experience bringing him back to the United States. But we, we got him out and, and he's... Uh, a teacher now in, in California. Wonderful. How old was he when you adopted him? Was he, he was quite young? Four. He was four. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Good. Interesting. All right. Any, um, in closing, I'm going to let uh, you wrap it up however you'd like to do it. Uh, Anything special as you look ahead and behind or whatever? I uh, Just to say that I hope all of the initiatives I was able to start at Purdue are sure. ongoing, and I'm pretty sure they are. I've, sure. I've been delighted with the people who've been chosen, uh, you know, and the diversity that now characterizes the institution. Right. So it's nice to hear. Dr. Gappa, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity, and I really appreciate that. And you'll ultimately get a copy of the transcript for you to edit before we put it on our website. Okay, and okay. then uh, and and uh, this is uh, and then you're going to put it on the web after you get the yeah, well, when we do when we do a draft, we will send that out to you for to look at before we put it on the website. Oh, okay. Okay. So you have that. You if you right. have any questions, don't hesitate to be in contact. You know I will. And I, okay. and if you if your travels bring you here sometime, you know where I'm always here, and I'd love to take you and your husband for lunch. Oh, uh, okay. You'll put That's that on great. your agenda. Okay. Okay, thanks Thank again. Now. Sure, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.